As World War II was in full swing, tensions in Eastern Europe were rising. The United States and Russia were collaborating, but distrust between the two nations was still evident. To keep the Soviet Union from expanding, the United States started a new prevention program. Unknown to the American public, the U.S. Army Signal Intelligence Service was hard at work on the Venona Project. It was only months after the start of the Venona Project when the SIS made a breakthrough discovery. In October of 1943, Lieutenant Richard Halleck discovered that the Soviets were reusing old trade codes to send encrypted messages. After this monumental discovery, the Venona Project was able to supply vital information to several Soviet espionage cases. Among those are the cases of Whitaker Chambers, Igor Gazenko, and most notoriously, Elizabeth Bentley. Later, the Venona Project led to the discovery of several more cases involving Soviet espionage and intelligence. I think we've got a much more serious situation now in communist infiltration of the CIA. Disturbs me beyond words. Well, we haven't. The members of the committee have not been advised, and I do think that... Oh, yes, they have. Oh, yes, they have. Have we... Uh, the names and uh, of the people... I, I've discussed this matter with the members of the committee. I've also discussed with the members of the committee the question of communist infiltration of atomic and hydrogen bomb plants. I felt that was, I think, even more important than this... Hey, Rich, meeting downstairs. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, sounds good. I'll uh, leave that there <laughs> and uh, head downstairs now. Well, some of you may have heard Senator McCarthy made a speech about Soviet communists infiltrating our government. A few of these people may actually be enemies of the state. We need to collect any and all information we can on them as soon as possible. I want it done yesterday. What are y'all still doing here? Come on, let's move. Rich, I want to give you this guy a person. We don't know much about it. This is all we got. <laughs> Frank Coe, one of the numerous people named by McCarthy as a communist, was secretary of the International Monetary Fund. He had drawn the attention of the Venona Project when he was named by both Whitaker Chambers and Elizabeth Bentley to be a communist sympathizer. Rich, you there? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm being followed. I don't know who by. Could it be the Reds? That's depending on if Coe's a Red or not. Did you get any information on him? No, sir, not much. He just, just walked to a bank and gets his drag finger across the street. Uh, did you get the name of the bank? 
I don't know. Let me check. Oh. Are you okay, James? What's going on out there? James? Are you, are you okay? He's, he's gone after me. Well, then get out of there, dude. Abort! Abort! Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm working on it. Mother Russia! <laughs> James, are you all right? Yeah. Okay, okay good. Yeah, Did you yeah, get the name yeah, of the bank? Fifth, yeah, Wells Fargo on Fifth Street. <laughs> the SIS spent the next several years gathering information on Co and several others named by McCarthy. Most cases were resolved rather quickly with a definite decision. Co's case, however, was not resolved quickly at all. In fact, his case never really came to a conclusion. He was exiled to China as a result of his communist suspicions, but his final sentence was never stated. He died in 1980, the same year that the Venona Project ended. When the files were released to the public, no additional information regarding Coe was discovered.